welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a comparison video between my Escort Cosworth and my Escort RS2000 4x4. Although both Escorts were built in 1995 and they share the same name, they're very, very different in many ways. So let's have a look at the cars in a bit more detail and talk you through the differences. So, on the face of it, the two cars look very different, despite both being manufactured in 1995. The Escort Cosworth is the Mark V variant, and my RS2000 is the Mark VI variant. And although there's some mild similarities, ultimately they're a very, very different car. Interestingly as well, both cars were developed in 1988 in the Mark IV guys. Um, however, the Escort Cosworth runs on a Sierra shortened floor pan, and this car runs on its own floor pan, designed from the original Mark IV in 1988. If we look at the front of the car, you notice that the Escort Cosworth has the Mark V style front lights, actually with this overhang here, and the slightly wider headlight, which featured on the RS2000, XR3i, SI models, and Escort RS2, uh, Cosworth models, um, with the smaller side light rather than an indicator, with the indicator repositioned here in the front bumper, with this additional spoiler on the bottom with extendable lower spoiler. You'll have to excuse the state of my Mark VI because I am using it regularly and it has been outside, but they featured these restyled rounder headlights, less aggressive looking in the Mark VI, and also so notably here you can see, look how the wings are extended on the Escort Cosworth, whereas we've just got standard wings. So we've got a much wider track on the Escort Cosworth, and that extends round to the back as well with the rear arches that are much wider on the back than what they are on the RS2000. Door handles as well, they're different. Square door handles on the Escort Cosworth, rounder door handles on the Mark VI. Wheel-wise, the Escort Cosworth had 16-inch wheels by 8 inches wide, and we had 15-inch wheels on the RS2000, although you will notice that these wheels are 18-inch on my Cosworth. Pop-out rear windows were a feature on the Escort Cosworth, whereas we just had ordinary rear windows. I think German models had pop-out rear windows, but not on the English models of the RS2000. Moving around to the tailgate, clearly the whale tail is a big giveaway that it's an Escort Cosworth. But we've got the smaller lights uh, synonymous with the Mark V. The chrome badging, however, was carried over on the 1995 onwards models to make it look more like these models that will run on the standard range of the car. So the RS2000 features the updated Mark V-B and Mark VI rear lights where you've got the extended light here. Um, and then the badging, this chrome individual lettering with the Ford badge in the middle, which as you can see on the Escort Cosworth was also featured in the middle on these models, trying to make them look more like each other essentially. Also the filler cap, missed this in the last video, so the filler cap here is the same as the uh, Mark VI model as well, rather than the smaller one that you open with the key on the side of the car without removing the flap. The rear bumper uh, was a large, larger rear bumper of the Escort Cosworth, unique to the Escort Cosworth. The RS2000, however, featured a standard bumper, but with the addition of these rear spats, which then followed round to the teardrop style side skirts on the RS2000 models. They also featured laterally on the GTI, whereas the side skirts on the Escort Cosworth, as you can see, actually follow the extended front wing all the way down and then the rear, widened rear arch. The Mark VI at the front, arguably less aggressive, but I like this styling. It modernized the Escort, and this car was a much more refined car than the earlier Mark Vs, which the Escort Cosworth retains more of a common theme in looks. Mirrors. Uh, on a latter Escort Cosworth for these smaller items which match in with the standard range such as featured on my RS2000. So now we're inside, we really start to see the differences. Um, standard dash essentially all around here, but the Escort Cosworth featured this banana pod uh, which has these um, additional free dials inside. They're unique to the Cosworth and the Cosworth badging, but ultimately the interior within the standard Escort is quite budget and very angular and received a lot of criticism at launch. Um, I'm going to pick out some bits of this car though that are unique to the Escort Cosworth. So first of all this console here, uh, so all of this was unique to the Cosworth. I believe it was borrowed from a Granada. Um, then we've got the centre armrest as well. 
This came straight out of a Sierra. So uh, it's very much a bits of car. Um, this piece up here, which I'm just focusing on here. So this is the electric uh, sunroof. Uh, that module was borrowed from Scor Granada Scorpio. So all the bits in the car were kind of borrowed from other models to create this car. So ultimately this is the Mark VI dashboard. You can see it's quite angular. These silver dials were in the Escort Cosworth, I believe in the RS2000 and potentially the XR3i as well. Although I think XR3i, I know I've said that might have been black with red detailing, but these were unique. Uh, we've got this here, the clock and the temperature gauge, which isn't working because it's not turned on. MTX75 gearbox, I believe, uh, with lift up reverse the boot release and the two window switches and these plump lever recaros again unique to the cosworth which actually i don't think is as good as the rs2000 seats uh rear head restraints and lever in the back oh look and there's the whale tail my car is a lux model um and this was an optional extra the passenger airbag um also features air conditioning and a single DIN stereo system, albeit this has been upgraded by the previous owner to a Sony one, which I hate. I do plan to put the original back in. Carl, who owned the car new, still has it. He's finding it for me and it will go back in. Also original Escort Cosworth floor mats. And you'll notice here a big difference. So all of this extra interior pieces that were borrowed from the Granada and the Sierra, etc is to basically cover the transmission tunnel because this was running on a Sierra floor pan. And you can see here, there's not a great deal of foot, foot room. It actually does stick out and protrude quite a lot. Um, that's a difference that you'll see in the Mark VI. The door cards were quite angular and square. We've got these square style door handles and door releases. Um, Quite an interesting feature in this car as well, which came about in more modern cars, is these black um, cladding, whatever you want to call it, I suppose, around the door surrounds windscreen job. Quite luxury cars and German cars more in the last 10 years have adopted that. It's quite interesting because normally it's light grey and I think it is in the RS2000 as well. But I just think it's really cool that some of these styling features that featured in a 1995 Escort are now adapted and brought into more modern cars. There you go, thought of the day. Also this being a latter car has this steering wheel which is a smaller version of what you found in the standard escort models of this era uh, it's the same as with my mexico and it's actually the same steering wheel as in the rs2000 which we're going to have a look at now so now let's climb on board the mark six so the first thing you notice when you get in the mark six is we've got white dials and i think the white dials were kind of inspired from the escort cosworth you'll see here the same srs steering wheel exactly the same but the dashboard has become a lot more rounded and a lot more modern. Uh, we've also got this double DIN stereo system, which is CD. That was an option in this car. Sadly, aircon wasn't specced. Um, but these Recaros, you have to kind of almost get around the bolsters in these. They're much more huggy than the other Recaros in the Escort Cosworth. And in my opinion, much nicer as well. Uh, Flow Raven cloth, the same as what you got in an Escort Cosworth Monty. And you'll notice here the door cards have become a lot nicer more aesthetically pleasing uh everything was kind of ovals in this car whenever they were designed whoever designed it obviously had the ford badge in mind i think if you look kind of the door handles were oval the clock was oval the buttons oval um so yeah very very different and the switch gears really kind of upped in quality and i just think better but then we've still got some we've retained the same electric windows uh mechanism as you got in the escort cosworth um note up there no electric sunroof we're we're manual there um but the same essentially roof surrounds i got that wrong as well they are black so my thought of the day is somewhat invalid uh the back seat was quite nice looking this car didn't have the optional headrests Specked, um, but you'll notice it's still got the Sierra esque gear knob with again lift, lift up reverse. I think this has the same gearbox as the Escort Cosworth, could be wrong, but I think it's an MTX 75. But notice, even though this is a four wheel drive, we don't have such a large transmission tunnel in this car. 
um, which I think is really interesting considering. So then we get to the really exciting bit, the engine. So mine being a late Escort Cosworth features this silver rocker cover. I think I've mentioned it in other videos, but just to recap, the blue rocker cover uh, featured on the Escort Cosworth Big Turbo, the red rocker cover featured on Sapphire and Sierra Cosworths, and the green rocker cover was featured on Sapphire Cosworth 4x4 from 92 onwards, I believe. So this is my engine bay. And you can see one of the notable differences with the Cosworth being the engine runs from front to back or back to front whichever way you want to look at it um, whereas when we go across to the Escort RS2000 the Escort runs from left to right or right to left whichever way you want to look at it it was a two litre 16 valve double overhead cam 100 depending on who you listen to it was either 145 or 150 horsepower or somewhere in the middle uh, featured efi injection um, it's got the standard air box and this engine can be pushed up to about 280 horsepower via mount tune which is something i'm seriously considering to be honest because this car is totally underpowered this engine uh, was 217 horsepower um, from factory in the latter models. It featured a Ford based ECU, um, which is less tunable than the big turbo cars. Uh, T25 to Garrett turbo hiding under the hot plate, which I won't make the mistake of touching this time. And again, standard air box. Um, This car much, much more tunable than this car. Um, and also this car is so much more popular. So the Escort Cosworth is held in hugely high regard. This probably isn't. So this for me was a nostalgic purchase uh, and something I absolutely love. But the main bit point being that I cannot run around town in an Escort Cosworth, do the shopping in it and just leave it and not worry about it. Whereas this, I can, and that's why I think it's so great. It still gives you the kind of retro cool feel of the Escort Cosworth, but without the panic, <laughs> essentially. Another notable difference is the boot lock. So we've got that on the Escort Cosworth. We've got this bar on the RS2000. So just before I close off on the video, let's have a bit of a walk around. This is what essentially a Ford 4 caught, easy for me to say, could have looked like in 1995 albeit not someone's driveway but these two cars would have sat together at some point in time or could have sat together at some point in time on a forecourt and i just think that's so cool it brings back so many memories of what 1995 would have been like um probably buying that and wishing you'd bought that So I'm very much hoping to do another video soon with the Escort Mexico, the Escort Cosworth and the RS2000 all together. Uh, but in the meantime, this is my video for today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I enjoyed showing you guys around the cars. You're going to be seeing a lot more contact with both of these. They're, they are staying. They're not cars I'm planning to get rid of because um, I absolutely love them both. Apologies, the RS2000 was a bit dirty, but as I said, I do use it and that's a byproduct of using it essentially so hope you've liked the video if you have like subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments cheers guys have a great day